Astros were hoping for at least six innings today with a limited bullpen. And down goes Turner on strikes. That is the second time Brown has struck out Justin Turner's third strikeout of the game. And he slows it up with that breaking ball, and he throws Springer for a back-to-back -back strikeout. Now four on the day for Hunter. Got him. What a run Hunter Brown's on. One run allowed in his last five starts over 31 innings. The potential American League Pitcher of the Month in June starts July with six shutout against Toronto. He's got a 0 0.29 ERA over his last five starts. The Astros took down the Toronto Blue Jays 3-1 yesterday on Canada Day, and it was largely due to the work of Hunter Brown, who went six innings. Not the prettiest Hunter Brown outing. Three walks, two hits allowed, but zero earned runs again. Five strikeouts. Hello and welcome aboard Gallant and George. It is Tuesday, July 2nd. 2024 he's got to be the american league pitcher of the month joe absolutely this hasn't already happened today it's supposed to be announced at some point today do we riot i don't know if we'll go that far we are we, certainly surprised do we protest take a knee i took a knee yesterday you did take, I, it wasn't the best knee i mean i, I saw I, a foot on chair yeah, well, I took a knee on camera. Gotcha. It had I, to show the knee on the camera. Today, if I took a knee on camera, you'd see my short shorts. I'm if, looking good. If I took a knee on camera, you wouldn't see me over the desk. Ah, so. You made fun of yourself there. I though. did. I did. I didn't bully you this time. Uh, you didn't. I opened it up to my to myself. He was awesome, um, considering how the game started. You know, 40, what, 45, 46 pitches through the first two innings. You're coming off a bullpen game, and you can kind of see it on social media and, and listen to the Bees talk about it on the way home, and there's kind of like a little bit of panic already. Uh, they used all these guys the day before, and Hunter Brown's pitch count is that high through two innings. To then get through six innings and to end it the way he did was very impressive because what separates a good pitcher from a great pitcher, we all know this, is when you don't have your best stuff, it's still finding a way to be pretty damn good. And that's what he was yesterday. He didn't have his best stuff. But he found a way, again, to dominate. That's what he's been doing the last five starts. It's incredible. A .29 ERA. That sounds made up. It's historic. Sarah Langs tweeted this out. Baseball person, for those who don't know. F-A-L-S. Pitchers with a sub .30 ERA in a five-start span in Astros history. 1979. J.R. Richard, 1980, J.R. Richard, 1981, Nolan Ryan, 1984, Nolan Ryan, 1986, Jim Deshaies. This has not happened in our lifetime wow. for the Houston Astros. Hunter Brown, along with Nolan Ryan, J.R. Richard, and Jim Deshaies. Wow. That's an, it's an impressive list for the Astros, but even just, I wonder when's the last time it just happened in general. I'm sure someone tweeted that out. But it, to see this run that he's gone on, his first 11 starts, he's a 6-1-8 ERA. It's one of the, it's the sec, it was the second worst in baseball. And then since then, he has that .29 ERA in his last five starts. That is an unbelievable turnaround. By just adding a sinker or two-seamer that still no one really knows exactly what to call it. Because everyone says something different. It apparently breaks inside on right-handed batters where his four-seam fastball breaks away from right-handed batters. But you're right. I don't think any of us know exactly what the hell that pitch is. Well, because everyone, like, you, just, you hear people within the Astros, they keep changing their mind. You hear people say two-seamer, you hear people say sinker, but whatever it is, it's been dominant. And it's adding that to his arsenal. It, yeah, you could have said logically, okay, maybe adding a pitch would, would help him. And get him his ERA back in the threes. To see what it's done the last five starts and to turn him into a completely different animal is is still shocking. Because like think think of it was this, if this was flipped, Paul. If his first five starts of the season were a point two nine, and then his next eleven he had a six one eight, we would be calling Robert him Robert Valdez. Yeah, exactly. We'd be calling him a fluke. We'd be saying it was a fluke start to the season, and he was you know it's not real. It's not sustainable. Now, since it's gone the other way, it kind of makes me feel like this is not to this level sustainable. That's not realistic, right? A point two nine ERA is not realistic. I'm still not all the way th there yet. You're right in that it has been an awesome stretch, but 
I, I feel so blown away by what he has done. The 1.16 ERA in June is the best for an Astro since Daryl Kyle in 1993. Only one other pitcher in baseball in his last 11 starts has a sub-2 ERA and sub-200 batting average against because opponents are hitting 188 against Hunter Brown his past 11 appearances with a 1.99 ERA. It's Garrett Crochet. Your guy, who you made me aware of. He's a good pitcher. I still don't think he's real. Uh, his ERA has dropped from 9.78 to 4.07 since May 1st. Everything's looking great. He deserves a ton of credit. He credited a couple of people that we'll talk about in a little bit. There is still a part of me that is not 100% bought in to this being real, and it's entirely because of how good he's been. Yeah, well, because it's so good. And it's there, against the Angels, the Tigers, White Sox, Rockies, and Blue Jays, who all suck. There's a regression to the to the mean to be had. The, the question is, what does the regression long term look like? It, is he a four ERA guy, and this is just the most unbelievable stretch ever? Is he a, a three ERA guy? Like, like what is Hunter Brown? What does that regression look like? When does it happen? And you know, that's that's really the question for me. Is just. How much of the the middle ground is there between the six nine three guy and the point two nine guy? Because he's definitely leaning towards the higher number yeah, I, for sure. I, I, I again, it's been great. I want this to continue. I hope it will continue. I wonder what happens when he goes through his struggles again because he even said yesterday and got a little bit of confirmation from both Joe Espada. And from uh, Ryan Presley and from Alex Bregman as well. When he's not feeling confident and he's not moving around in a circle like an angry dude out there, sometimes things get to him and it turns into a from Valdez kind of meltdown. And I mean, the good thing for him yesterday is that in a couple of situations where he put runners on base by not hitting the strike zone and throwing a ton of pitches, he was able to work his way out of it. And he said after the game, one of the things that has been helping him is that he's, he's taking a deep breath and he's not thinking that this is all going to spiral. Here is Hunter Brown uh, after the game talking about what helped him get through some of the messes that the Blue Jays presented him. You know, coming in, what kind of what kind of team they are. So, you know, you got to make sure that, that you're filling it up. And, you know, the first two innings, I really wasn't, you know, maybe executing at the at the clip that I wanted to, but, you know, was able to, to kind of bear down and, like you said, you know, maybe make some pitches early, early in that bat that you know kind of force uh, force him to swing at some stuff that you know resulted in, in good contact for us. The other part of him, besides the guys on base, there was some really bad calls from the umpire. Yesterday. Yeah, there was some. There was a couple in the bottom of the zone where they were clear strikes. You know, I was listening to the radio broadcast and then was going back and watching some of the innings as I was driving home. And you don't typically hear broadcasters to say, like, what is the umpire doing? And that's what you were hearing yesterday during the game. And there was one where he did, where he walked off the mound. He was kind of like, what, what's going to happen next? But he kept his composure. And you can you can tell with him that there is a lot of confidence. And, and the the less, the panic is gone from him. And that, that's a huge part of this, too. Like, that, that growth of being a pitcher and being able to overcome adversity, something that we don't believe Fran Valdez can do, something I don't believe Fran Valdez will ever be able to do. But Hunter Brown in yesterday's game showed that whether it's bad umpiring or guys getting on base, that he doesn't freak out and handle himself very well. Valdez did do it for a full season for what it's worth with the consecutive start streak, but of late you feel like it's definitely on the table in any start uh, situation where things really unravel for him. Hasn't happened for Hunter Brown of late. He has been awesome. This is not us being Debbie Downers on YouTube, text and tags. And this is not a matter of us, I think, understanding that you need to be patient over the course of the baseball season as some on the Twitch are suggesting. Hunter Brown was... Sean, do you have the dump button ready? We, 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 we need it for this one. Hunter Brown was fucking awful at the beginning of this year. He was terrible. So bad. What, you thought that was going to turn around? You patting yourself on the back for that? You're on crack if you thought that was going to definitively turn around. He deserves the most credit for doing this. Well, no even, doubt about it. But if you thought, if you thought, hey, let's just let the guy who allowed, uh, what, what was it, 11 hits in two-thirds of an inning? 
Oh my God, you, let's just let that keep happening? Okay. Uh, wow, you're more patient than me. I would love to see your kids walk all over you. I would love to see your terrible dog walk all over you. He never does that as he gnaws off my leg. And even turn around, this is not this is not what people would expect. Even if you are the most confident Astros Hunter Brown homer, when things are going awful, you're not saying over five starts he's going to have a .29 ERA. Like, like, that's not realistic expectations for any pitcher in baseball. I wouldn't go into a season and expect that Garrett Cole to do this in a five-game stretch. Think about it. You just said it hasn't happened for the Astros since before you and I were born, okay? We're not we're not, we're not the oldest crowd in, here in the room but or at the building. But Hunter Brown, his turnaround, it, there is a development of patience in baseball that you have to have. It's a long season. But the idea that he was going to be objectively terrible— and then be this guy, it's not being a Debbie Downer. I said it last week. Is he a Cy Young guy? I don't think so. Is he the number one guy in a rotation? I don't think so. Can he be the third best pitcher and win you playoff games? Yes, I do believe that. These are reasonable expectations yeah. for Hunter Brown. To, to me, putting him in the conversation and, and trying to crown him already as this elite guy, it goes back to the Justin Verlander, just the motion. That he had. That it's just like JV. He's from Detroit. Find a middle ground. Sometimes it's okay to be excited about a guy, see it not go well, and reset your expectations for a player. Yesterday was one of those outings that felt a lot more like some of the starts that JP France got through last season as opposed to the work of an ace. His numbers over the course of his last five starts since June, since May, no doubt about it, they have been incredible. And I hope that this continues. The Astros honestly need it to continue. So he's going to have to keep on doing this over and over and over again. To his credit, he has been. All I am asking is, do you trust this guy implicitly implicitly right now? I'm not quite there, but I love what I'm seeing. He deserves a ton of credit for what he's doing, and he needs to keep doing it. 